on my channel, I tend to paint single figures in some fun or limited way, but rarely do I do large scale projects, stuff that takes more than a few months to get done. Well, I think it's time I change change that. My first fantasy army was Dark Elves. Okay, but my second, more well-loved fantasy army was Rats. Here are some of the first ones I've ever done. I gave them gray fur and I did all the easy processes of the time. Dry brushing, washing over metallics, simple stuff. In my defense, I did paint 140 of them for just two units. Eventually my colors shifted a bit and I ended up on a yellow and red oxide scheme for them, which I still kind of like today. The latest ones I've done were the Warband for Underworlds. I kept that color scheme, but now I'm just a much better painter, so using more layering and blending. My point here is that when it comes to years, and sometimes even just months, consistency is hard to maintain. I couldn't even fathom a guess as to what the paint names were I used to paint those first rats. So in this video, I want to share the idea of a painting journal, a way to keep painting projects organized and keep consistency over a long release period. And OPR's new Ratman faction models are the perfect opportunity to start from the beginning for me. So I'm going to do a skirmish size force for now, starting with some warriors and a war machine. In my case, it's going to be the rat bike. The more noble style will give me a chance to refresh the color scheme and make it a bit more clean. Over the next six months, I'm going to see a lot of different rats, and I'm going to have to paint something from each of the releases. So if I'm going to keep things consistent, that means I'm going to have to keep things organized. Before I start down this rabbit hole, I want to make mention of the digital solutions that are out there. Brush Rage was the one suggested to me, and one thing that it will be able to do that a paper journal won't is actually time how long it takes you to paint a miniature. This seems really useful if working on a commission or trying to make sure you don't give more effort to any one fig over another. Otherwise, it has everything you'd expect from a painting logging tool place to add all the colors used, somewhere to add pictures, which would be good for keeping references all somewhere accessible, and of course, a place to write all your own commentary per model or project. So if you're just looking for something quick and easy to log paints and models, this seems like a pretty good solution. But I'm more of an old school kind of guy myself. In fact, I used to be so old school, when I was working on a paint scheme for a new army, before all this printing malarkey was a thing, I'd cut out the front picture from the box the models came on and write the recipe on the back. Saved me the trouble of listing the models. For this project though, I'm going even more organized and using an actual journal or notebook. When shopping for one, I wanted something hardbound and with firmer pages, something with cardstock if you can find it. Blank pages I think will be more useful than lined ones. But the one I was able to find actually has these dots instead. The style is known as a bullet journal, which as a pun for a sci-fi army, I couldn't have wrote it better. This one's pages aren't as thick as cardstock, but were the thickest of all the options I saw. Plus its binding will allow those pages to lay flat. And the price was right at only about $4. It's okay if the pages aren't that thick, it just means we'll have to deal with some bleed if using ink pens, markers, or paint. But if you've got a wet palette, you've already got the solution. Just a sheet of parchment paper or the pre-cut stuff that comes with some of them placed behind the page you're working on and the bleed issues disappear. The last thing that will be important for your journal is to get rid of its preciousness. It's brand new and untouched, and that kind of thing can scramble our brains. It makes us not want to touch it, so the first little step is just to force ourselves to do it. Flip a few pages in and give it a title, in pen. Now anywhere we go from here can't be worse than what we've already done. So now we have the journal, a pencil, and everything's ready to go. But what the heck are we even putting in it anyway? First and foremost, it's going to be a place for paint information. 
This is about getting models consistent across time, which means having a reference for exactly what you used and how is going to be important. And that's all my first ones were anyway. But that doesn't need to be the only thing. Because this is going to be for my tabletop force, a good place to start is making a list of exactly which models I have and army list components. So for the Ratmen this month, I'll be doing five warriors with halberds, one captain, but split into two units, and one bike war machine. I'm not sure yet what I'll be printing next month, or even next year even, so I'll leave it there and add more as they come, but leave a few pages of space for that. Another good use is for experiments with color schemes and mixes. I know what my scheme is going to be, but these regal rats have way more leather than their sewer counterparts, so I'm going to need a lot of browns. So I'm going to set up a grid. These bullet points are really useful for this kind of thing. It'll just be a 5x5 five five square because I have 5 browns that I want to mingle together. I'll put the names at the bottom and draw a line to its corresponding row along the side, then divide the whole thing in half diagonally. With the backing paper in place, I'll start making the mixes on my wet palette and filling in this grid. If you're wondering why the diagonal, sometimes the difference between mixes show up better with some white in it. So since colors would be doubled up in this grid anyway because there's two spots for each mix, I'm using the second one to add some white so I know how it'll look brighter. Now that I've got my grid, I can start picking out colors I want to use for my Ratman. Do I go more yellow or more red? Which ones feel like a nice fur to me? Not that they have to have the same fur color, so this grid will help me pick out more than one should I decide to diversify them like that. Scrolling notes about color schemes or testing swatches beside one another to see if they'll work together is another great way to show your work to yourself so that you'll have a better idea why you made the choices you did in this moment. When it comes to actually listing out the paints, things should be broken down by model first, then by the part. So let's say I'm picking fur color in this example. Next important thing should be the technique being used to apply it. In this case, a base coat. Then we can list all the paints used to make the mix and general ratios. So in this case, one part burnt umber and one part raw sienna but only a touch of white. So make it two parts of the two browns and only one part white. So we're not going into fractions, just increase the ratios. Another good thing to list is the brand used. Use shorthand for this since it just needs to be a reminder. And lastly, when done painting, actually take some of the final mix and make a swatch. Then just do that for every step all the way to the final color. Practically, it might look something like this. I'm going to start my rats with a primer layer of black and Liquitex red oxide, about a 1 to 6 ratio. So I'll write that in my journal like so, and add a swatch. Next, I'm going to give them a zenithal of raw umber and some white, probably 5 to 1, then swatch that too. Now I'll break it down by part, so starting with bare skin for his feet and hands. I'll make this easy and start with a skin blend, a pink skin from the scale artist line but do three parts of that and one part Joe Sanja Indian Red Oxide for a base coat layer. Then I'll do just the pure Scale Artist skin tone as a layer, and then I'll add some white to that, it looks like four parts to one, and layer that on the knuckles. Lastly, I'll do a glaze with six parts medium to one part red oxide again to give some pink to those shadows. Now just do that for every color, and you'll have the perfect breakdown of how you painted it you can not only reference, but easily share when you're asked. The last question we have to ask ourselves is, how much effort do we want to put into this journal? Obviously my first go at it was not very much, and that's still as okay today as it was then. Nothing wrong with just writing all the information you need in a line quickly as a quick reference when you need it. Sometimes you don't want to end up making your journal as much of a project as the painting, so I totally get it. For a little more effort though, we could instead use a ruler to draw in some of the architecture for the information to keep it more neat and organized. Make sure everything has its place to be filled in, so that you don't forget and leave anything out. This would be best practice, but take some extra work. But what if there was a way to do the work up front so that it's really easy to fill in when you get painting? Well, there is one, 
and we're going all the way back to our childhoods for it. Because it's stickers! I made up some quick grid designs in Illustrator and printed them out on sticker paper. Now all I have to do is cut them out and add them to the page whenever I need to get a quick grid for some mixes, or to add unit stats. What I really like about them is I can quickly get the information in, then draw up a sticker after and replace it in the book with it. Plus, it'll let me get fancy and fun, adding pictures and texts in a way I normally couldn't draw. And if I had even more time, I'd be able to really give these grids some graphic design and really make it stand out per army or project. But that'll have to be for another time, because for now, I've got rats to paint. Please subscribe if you like this video, and check the link in the description to my Discord where I talk all sorts of nonsense about miniatures painting, provide critique on paint jobs, and occasionally stream.